Good morning, students. We are discussing on construction of rigid pavement. Before starting the detailed discussion on the construction procedure of the rigid pavement, we should brush up what is the rigid pavement and what we have to construct in the rigid pavement. Okay, so our lecture will start with a question that is, what is rigid pavement? pavement that constructed of cement concrete or the reinforced concrete slab is generally preferred as the rigid pavement. Here we have uh, two different images of a rigid pavement. First one is showing the top view and the side view of the rigid pavement and the next image is uh, showing the upper surface of the rigid pavement where you can easily identify the longitudinal joints and latitudinal joints where you can easily identify the longitudinal joint and the transverse joint here you can see this whole line is our longitudinal joint and these are the transverse joints okay the tie bar are constructed within the pavement surfaces so let's discuss how we can construct the rigid pavement the cement concrete road construction is one of the type of low volume road construction. The construction of the road is mostly dependent on the factor like the traffic that is to be handled by the road after the completion. On most of the village roads connecting the small villages in the rural areas of the country, the type of vehicle, vehicular traffic is quite from the routine traffic on the highways. The traffic that passing on the road that can be categorized into three different categories that are the light, medium and heavy commercial traffic. But the frequency of each class of traffic varies with the load and to sustain that load, to bear that particular load, the rigid pavements are most effective and most valuable roads so let's discuss the detailed procedure that how to construct the rigid pavement the construction of rigid pavement we have different steps to follow to construct the rigid pavement the first procedure the first step to construct that is the preparation of the subgrade the next after subgrade we have to prepare the subbase or the base course as we all know that in the rigid pavement, uh, we should not construct both base uh, and sub-base course if we necessary, if we think that uh, there is a need to provide the sub-base course only then and then we will provide the sub-base course. Otherwise, we provide sub-base or the base course as a single layer. Okay. The next step after constructing the sub-base course, we have to place the form works besides the road. The step 4 that is batching of material and mixing. Step 5 that is transportation and the placing of concrete on particular site. After applying the concrete we have to do compaction. After compaction texturing has to be performed and after texturing the whole road is kept for the curing purpose. And after the curing, you can allow the traffic on that particular road. So, let's discuss in detail that how we can construct this particular, or how we can perform this particular steps. Okay. The step 1, that is preparation of the subgrade or uh, we can label it as a subgrade preparation. Okay. The subgrade preparation that involves First, the cleaning. Second, the earthwork. Okay, in the earthwork, the excavation or the filling of soil, the replacement of weak soil, soil stabilization. These all the parameters, these all the factors included in the earthwork preparation. Okay, and after that, after we have uh, replaced the weak soils, after the excavation, whatever the remaining soil that we have to get compacted. Okay. Now, 
where the concrete layer is laid directly over the subgrade. The subgrade is moist at the time concrete is placed. If the subgrade is dry, the water could be sprayed over the surface before laying any concrete courses. However, all this care should be taken so that the soft patches or the water pools are not formed on the surface. The subgrade is properly drained with the considering minimum modulus of subgrade reaction as 5.54 kg per centimeter square area. Okay, so this is how we can prepare the subgrade by doing the excavation, by doing the cleaning of that particular site and by replacing the weak soil with the proper soil and or else we can also do the soil stabilization. Okay, so this is how we can prepare a subgrade. In the rigid pavement as well as in the flexible pavement, this procedure is almost the same where we do the earthwork procedure then after we apply the extra soil on it and we get compact that soil, okay. So after subgrade preparation, the next step that we have to follow is the preparation of sub-base pores or the base pores. As we have earlier discussed, here we provide either sub-base or the base pores, okay. Only and only if we found necessity to provide this both uh, layers then and then we apply these two layers otherwise we apply only and only a single layer so let's discuss a single layer construction of the rigid pavement a base or the sub base pores to the concrete pavement provides uniform and reasonably formed support it prevent mud pumping and also it act as the capillary cutoff the sub-base or the base course for the concrete pavement could be constituted with brick flat soling, water bound mica dump, granular aggregates, crushed aggregates or the crushed concrete, slag, the stabilized soil, etc. The sub-base could be of three different types that is of the granular material, stabilized soil and the semi-rigid material. So let's talk on the granular material. As we earlier discussed that in the granular material, we can provide uh, brick soling with the one layer of sand under it, water bound mica dump, well graded granular materials, etc. Okay, if we use the brick soling, the one layer flat brick soling having joints filled with the sand under the one layer of WBM material. All this should be considered or all this should be specified in the IRC code that is IRC 19-2005. So as per the their specification, we have to apply this granular material. The next uh, subbase course can be constructed with the stabilized soil. Here, the local soil or the murum stabilized with the lime or the fly ash or the cement as appropriate to give the minimum soaked CBR of 50 after the 7 days of curing. Okay? If we are using the semi rigid materials that are of lime, uh, burnt, burnt clay, pozzolana concrete, okay, uh, lime fly ash concrete lean cement concrete all those concretes are to be lean cement concrete roller compacted concrete etc so these are the material with what we can apply to construct the sub base or the base course as a semi rigid material okay here the thickness of the sub base should be 15 cm when the material used is granular material or the stabilized soil However, this thickness would be reduced if you are using the semi-rigid material and that thickness is around 10 cm. Okay? The sub-base should be constructed in accordance with the respective specification 
and the surface that finished to the required lines, levels and the cross section. The layer should be kept moist when the cement concrete is placed. So this is what the construction of base course and the sub base course consists. The step 3 that is the placing of foam work that means the application of the foam works. In the foam works, the steel or the wooden foam works are generally used. Okay, the steel foam work are the mild slit channel section and their depth is equal to the thickness of the pavement and the length is at least 3 meter except where the curve is provided and that curve is having the radius that is less than 45 meter. Okay, now the wooden forms are dressed on the side. These have the minimum base width of 10 cm for the slab thickness of 20 cm. The forms are joined neatly and are set with the exactness to the required grade and the alignment. Otherwise, the road width or the road dimension would be changed. Okay, so in this figure, we can see how the form work can be applied for the road construction. The step 4 that is the patching of material and mixing. Here, the proportion mixture is placed in the weight batching plant. As we can see in the figure, all the batching of materials is done on the basis of one or more. Or the whole bag of the cement. Now weight of one bag is 50 kg or the unit weight of the cement is taken as the 1440 kg per meter cube. Okay, this is the dimension that in the batching machine or in the batching plant this amount is to be kept as the standard amount for the mixture. Okay, the mixing of concrete is done in batch mixture so that the uniform distribution and the uniformity in the color can be obtained as well as the homogeneous mix or the homogeneous material we can obtain from the mixture. The batch of cement fine aggregates and the coarse aggregates is laid together into the mixture. Water for mixing is introduced into the drum within 15 seconds of mixing. Also, after doing this mixture, we can also apply the add mixture for getting the better property, getting the, to enhance the property of the concrete mix, we can apply the add mixtures on it as per the specification. The next step, that is step 5, after batching and mixing the concrete, we have to transport the concrete to the site. The cement concrete is mixed in quantities that are required for immediate use. It should be seen that no segregation of materials results while transporting. Once your concrete is transported to the site, it reached to the site, then after you have to immediately apply that material on the road surface. So that is the spreading and this Spreading is done uniformly throughout the pavement so that the certain amount of redistribution is done with the shovel. Okay, once you spread the whole concrete on the road surface, then after with the help of shovel, we have to redistribute the concrete so that it can be mixed or it can be spread thoroughly to the surface. So after this step sticks. That is the compaction that has to be followed. Okay, here the surface of the pavement is compacted either by means of power driven finishing machine or by the vibrating hand screw areas where the width of the slab is small and hand consolidation and finishing is adopted. The concrete is further compacted by longitudinal float that is hal parallel to carriageway and passed gradually from 
one side to another side. The slab surface is tested for its grade and level with the straight edges. Compaction is the process which we use in flexible pavement as well as the rigid pavement. Also, we use this compaction in individual layer construction. If you are applying for subgrade, if you are applying for base or subbase course, in each and every course, we have to apply the compaction so that we can get or we can obtain the maximum capacity, maximum strength of the pavement. Okay. Now, after compaction, texturing is to be done. For texturing, a uh, broom is to be used. Finish the concrete has a smooth surface. When you have applied a concrete, you have then compacted that particular concrete layer. After that, you will get a smooth surface of concrete. Okay, so that is known as the finished concrete. Now, we cannot open the road with that much smooth surface that it can cause the accidents okay so for that uh, we have to give the skid property to that particular road surface and for that texturing is the important thing that has to be performed so texturing of the concrete surface is done to impart the required skid resistance to the concrete surface the texturing is done by means of wire brushing or grooving along the transverse direction, the initial texturing may be done at the time of construction of the paver itself. The final texturing is done no sooner the shine of the concrete surface goes off. The final step is the concrete curing. If you are constructing with the concrete, you must have to apply the curing procedure. Okay, so for the road construction also we are applying the curing. How? The initial curing and the final curing, these two different curing has to be performed. In the initial curing, the surface of the pavement is entirely covered with the burlap cotton or the jute mats. Prior to the placing, it is saturated with the water and wet side is placed on the pavement surface. Now, in the final curing, the curing with the wet soil that expose the edges of slabs are banked with the soil balm. A blanket of sandy soil that is free from the stones is placed. The soil is thoroughly kept saturated with the water for 14 days and when the concrete attains the required strength, or after the 28 days of curing, the concrete road is open for the traffic. Okay, so this is how we can construct and this is how we constructing the road rigid pavement. I hope students, you get the thorough information, thorough knowledge about how we can construct the rigid pavement. Thank you so much for your kind attention.